So hello, uh, thank you for coming to our talk. So this is the talk uh, done by us together. So hello, I'm Chuck, and with me there's uh, Tanya. And today we're gonna talk about uh, a handbook for uh, organizing a sprints online, um, because in this time that I, I'm sure that we will need it. And um, yeah, we would introduce you to how we achieve that and um, why we have that idea. And you could also use the resources. So let's get started. Um, so uh, first, maybe I will let Tanya introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Thank you. And my name is Tanya Lard. I am currently a senior developer advocate at Microsoft, where I focus on all things machine learning, data science, and scientific computing. Um, I also well, have fingers on her hands everywhere in like in the Pie Ladies Global Council. I'm an editor of JAWS and I'm a trustee for a couple of societies and organizations related to open source and research software. Yeah, so uh, I'm Czech and uh, I'm a developer relations lead at Terminus DB and I'm also uh, organizing your Python. I'm one of the board member and my background was a data scientist, but now I've stepped into the world of the, uh, developer relations and I'm also a streamer on Twitch. So uh, yeah, we do love sprints and we loved it because it's a very good way to bring the community together. We can bring in the user group or even people who haven't, you know, know your project that you can introduce them to the community and then we can introduce them, like we can encourage them to uh, contribute to your open source project and they would step into this kind of open source environment that they could uh, contribute and they will be empowered uh, because the users, you know, not just a user, they will have a say of like the development, they will be like part of the development development kind of uh, team that they because they they contribute to the code and also we welcome uh, diversity uh, in leadership we just don't want the BDFL to be the only leader uh, in the in the project and uh, yeah so we want to be in inclusive as well so we kind of introduced this to a lot of uh, minorities in the tech community we hope that they won't feel that they're left out they also include in this uh, this contribution and also environment that they could have a uh, have a have a first step on the project. So, yeah, and uh, well, we we did organize some sprints before, but uh, things happen when this year, you know, what happened. Uh, so coronavirus kind of stopped a lot of things going on. Uh, there is less traveling. There's uh, less meeting, uh, you know, physically. So um, yeah, we have to do things online now. This is kind of the new trend, a uh, new norm uh, nowadays. And um, well, is it easier? Uh, so well, we don't have to travel. We are at the comfort of our home, but uh, kind of it's difficult to get people to connect in a traditional way to, to feel that they are, you know, doing something together. So um, there are other issues that we have to face. For example, time zones, we want to get people involved, but they're not traveling to be at the same space physically. So they would be scattered uh, in different time zones, uh, wherever they are. And also uh, there's lack of interpersonal uh, interactions because everything is online. There's like, you know, a screen between you and the other person. Um, and also how can we give support? We can't sit next to them and kind of do some pair programming with them. And also like even mentors would find it challenging because they can't have the same type of interaction with the, the their mentees. Um, also, it's like how to get people engaged in what they're doing. They could maybe just go and, and maybe like go to cook some food. You know, they could um, because they're not in this you know bind to a, a physical space. So how can they keep engaging in the activity that's going on? And uh, also code of conduct. You know, online sometimes you know uh, online forums and all this online chat room can be a little bit different uh, from, you know, face to face uh, conversations So people could react like behave a little bit different. So we still want to ensure the code of conduct is uphold. Um, also, there are other technical issues we have, like maybe participants will have problems with their Wi-Fi connection and maybe like whether they can use the tool because they have different operating system, you know, um, all of these things could be more challenging. Um, so, uh, well, we kind of roll with it. <laughs> and uh, so we 
we kind of like uh, figure things out step by step. So, well, for example, dealing with time zones, we do have the challenge, you know, like, a, like I said before, we have, we try to get the people around the globe to uh, participate. So they would be in different time zones. And uh, well, the good thing is that they could have, you know, people around the world, they don't have to travel, they can also have access. Uh, but, you know, the thing is that, um, you know, uh, do we have to be there 24 hours to cater everybody or do mentors have to be there 24 hours to cater everybody? So Tanya will tell us how we achieve that. Yep. So uh, it was very, very hard, especially uh, when everyone is online, we have people coming not only from a centralized place or a single time zone. Um, so in the past, we've organized 24 hour long event. It's super, it's like a full day. Uh, but that was the only way in which we could find to cover different time zones, have folks to overlap and, and mingle with each other. Um, Another option that we are now working on for another set of sprints is having smaller separate events uh, that are targeting time zones. This definitely helps a lot with mentors and like having well-defined structures on when an event fin it starts and finishes, even if that runs into uh, another time zone. And also because we want to make sure that everyone is supported at all times, that we are making are keeping this environment safe and friendly from us all. Uh, we're not having we're not only rotating mentors and attendees, but also we make sure that organizers uh, are distributed across the time zones, and also we have folks that are observing and enforcing the code of conduct at all times. Um, this is especially critical when we're working with folks from marginalized uh, backgrounds or minoritized communities, uh, minoritized groups within our community. Yeah, so the other challenge that we had is that, uh, well, because we're doing it online, so, you know, human interaction is different. Uh, yeah, we don't have, like, we don't have people sitting together. We just, like, we are all scattered around the world, just connected using the internet. Um, how can we make it a safe space? Like we ensure that nobody's offended because words can be a weapon, right? If someone use it uh, incorrectly, it could hurt somebody and we don't want that to happen. We want it to be safe and inclusive for everyone. Um, so uh, we have to connect, uh, also connect mentors and mentee together. They could work together in a format that they're not sitting next to each other, but they are still, they can still work together. So mentors can provide mentorship to their mentees. And also the communication between organizers and the participant, including mentors and mentees could be a little bit different because we can be like, you know, ding, 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 hello. Okay, now is the time for presentation or let's have a presentation right now for the project. Uh, we have to, you know, uh, have communication with them so that they know that we, this is the schedule, what we are going to do next and what is happening at the moment. So uh, yeah, how can we achieve that? Um, yeah, so uh, for online sprints, we had to find proxies for all of these traditional in-person interactions um, from regular sprints. Um, we started having all of our workshops in the grief, uh, and debrief using Zoom. And for auditing, for, well, for, for us to be able to keep track of the communication and also enforce the code of conduct and do some moderation, uh, we only centralize our all of our chat interactions and text intera uh, voice interactions through Discord. Um, this this has proven to be very helpful. But although it was originally designed for gamers, it does give us a lot of flexibility when it comes to having different mentors or different projects involved to have separate voice channels and, and separate text channels. Um, and it was very, very useful because folks could just jump straight into a video call, walk people through the code base or through the ratios. And uh, that kind of um, replaced that in-person interaction. Uh, we also were seeing a lot of mentors using very uh, interesting tools to to go through the code or share their screen or do peer programming using things like live share um, and on voice and live share, for example, in VS Code. That, that, that has been very useful as well. 
Um, and also we're thinking about recording getting started guides so that folks can use and reuse for them or for their workshops or sprints at any time. So folks can, can easily go through how to make their first pull request, how to interact with Git uh, or and GitHub to find projects to contribute to. Yeah, so also we have to find a way to provide support for the participants, especially uh, people who are as mentees that they have never done open source contribution before. They may be coming from a minority background that they uh, they feel a bit scared when they join this event, like especially when they are online, they will be like, OK, uh, I don't want them like we don't want them to feel alone. So um, yeah, so the challenge would be like, how can we provide mentorship to 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 let them know that they could get help easily? Uh, that you know, even though it's not a project specific, even though like something as easy as how do you get how do you get help these things that they know that even though they have never done it before, they would get help uh, from from us. And also, uh, yeah, like we have to really support them, like to that if they have never used Git <laughs> or never done anything with open source before that uh, they know that uh, they are here and they, it's fine to know nothing and someone will go to help them. So how can we, how can we provide all this in an online format? <laughs> So again, um, we tier the support that we were providing or that we're providing to attendees or contributors. So on one hand, we have all the technical guidance specific to projects that is provided by the mentors that can be either regular contributors to a project or maintainers and developers um, for this specific tool or, or a package or such. But we also provide a beginner's help desk. Um, and that is very, very focused on helping folks with contribution workflows, getting them started, helping troubleshoot a uh, development environment. We also have dedicated folks helping with Git issues because that is commonly, uh, it's, that's a common problem. So I, I remember when I was getting started um, contributing to open source, some of my biggest problems came to uh, merge conflicts or then I I had to do a rebase but rebasing code on top of each other can be like really really confusing and scary so we're trying to provide as much support as possible um, in that direction and um, also we always provide a a getting started contributing to open source and intro to GitHub at the very, very beginning for those that are absolute beginners or just for those that want to refresh a bit of their knowledge and workflow and, and want to be uh, fully prepared for the rest of this sprint. Yeah, so um, <laughs> let's put it this way. We have to keep folks engaged with no swags. Um, and that's so cute, actually. Uh, so how can we do that? Like, because, uh, well, before, you know, uh, we would make it make the event fun. You know, if you have make a pull request, we'll give you a sticker and things like that. Um, but yeah, like everybody's at home. It's difficult to give them swags. Like we have to post them. Uh, we, I mean, like personally, I've tried. But uh, yeah, my colleague really want to beat me because, oh my god, we're like, I have to go to the post office so many times. Um, but uh, yeah, and also people are distributed at home. There's so many things happening at home. They could be distracted easily by what happened uh, around them. So uh, how should we do it? Um, so the first thing is having regular check-ins, making sure that uh, we are constantly checking in on the mentors, making sure that all things are running uh, smoothly on our side, identifying where we could better support them, uh, as well as the contributors. So we are constantly hopping in and out from the different channels. Um, and we also have to, uh, we make a big effort on openly celebrating wins and we treat all wins equal, whether it's uh, someone identifying or finding a bug in the code and creating an issue for that, or someone um, submitting their first pull request. We've had a lot of, a lot of different uh, wins and accomplishment and we make sure that none of them go unnoticed. Um, so for that, we have a specific channel where uh, a bot will basically celebrate these wins, uh, keep people engaged. 
and especially now that we are moving into a bit more uh, structured um, time zones allocation, uh, we do have to put a lot of effort in indicating when a time zone rotation uh, is happening, when it's the start, when it's the finish. If folks want to run into the next time zone, we make sure that they are also introduced and included uh, with the projects and the other uh, time slot. Yeah, also the, the main challenge that we, we have it in our mind is that um, how to provide a safe environment because, well, like all events, we have a code of conduct, but um, it's not just there for decoration, right? We have to make sure that it's effective, that uh, it's enforced. And so we need to have moderation, right? To to make sure that it's uphold and everybody's following it. And uh, what about like, because, well, like we said before, we're using Zoom and Discord. There's like many chats and many tools. Like we need a lot of like manpower to keep track and response if, if things happen. So uh, what should we do? All right. Um, so the approach that we follow for enforcing code of conduct is a combination of bots and human, because you always need a human that is going to be there uh, dealing with any complaints or harassment or any code of conduct violation. Um, so again, to keep track of all of this conversation, making sure that we can actually actively moderate and intervene as soon as possible um, and smoothly, we have a centralized communication approach. I mentioned before that we're using Zoom, for example, for the debrief and, and bringing everybody into the event. Um, but we made sure that there is no chat there and everything is happening inside our Discord server. Because that way we could also rely on moderation bots to make sure that there is no swearing, that folks are not spamming, um, and that other people can, well, that organizers, mentors, um, and the Code of Conduct Enforcement have uh, certain rights to, to ban or mute folks as, as required. Um, and we also make sure that the person, that we have at least one person that has been trained in Code of Conduct Enforcement uh, at all times, and this is massively helpful. We've never had a, an incident um, on mentor sprints, but that means that that is never going to happen. So we always make sure to have someone trained, someone that, that knows what the processes are um, and can follow through at any time. Yeah, so uh, I will let Tanya to um, bring us the uh, introduction of this website and handbooks that is included. It's a resources that you may want to use. <laughs> right, so um, so far we've introduced our sprints. Uh, this whole project is called Med Entry sprints because it centers around the whole interaction or this whole mentor mentee interaction. Um, but it's just, it goes uh, beyond just organizing sprints for projects, for conferences, or events. Uh, we want to truly build a community around this. We've had some cases in which folks that were um, that joined a sprint for the first time to make their first contribution to open source have now developed a long-term relationship with their mentor and the project and, and our regular contributors. Um, and we want to bring as many people across the globe, across different projects. This definitely started um, as a hatchery program in PyCon. We were very, very targeted to the Python, to the Python community. But we really want everyone that is organizing sprints to um, to jump into this approach and and make it a global community, a global collaboration. And for these purposes, we have also started to work on a community handbook where we are trying to um, distill all of our learning on how do you actually run a mentor sprint. Um, we also have or we also receive a lot of requests on can you run a mentor sprint at my conference? Can we work on a mentor sprint uh, with you? And although we've done it in the past, it's not scalable. So the best way to, to help folks uh, that are currently organizing sprints uh, or want to, to run their sprints is giving all the tools and the learnings that we've built across uh, all of these events so that they can go and, and reuse them. And 
this brought us to working together on a community handbook. It, it follows a completely open approach. So all of our learnings are into this handbook. We have an approach where we have uh, content for organizers, mentors, and attendees, so everyone knows uh, what the role in a mentor sprint is, how to better prepare. Uh, we have uh, guides for organizers on, well, what do you need to, uh, to run a mentor sprint, um, what tools we normally recommend, what setup uh, has proven to be useful for folks to join. When it comes to mentors, it is a lot about um, reframing that mindset on thinking beyond just code contributions or just coding issues for um, for contributors. And we do encourage them to bring a very, very diverse set of issues. Um, it can be like building tutorials, working on documentation, um, code contribution, design, if someone needs a logo. Um, I think in the past when we were having in-person events, we had folks from Adafruit bringing uh, some of their hardware so that folks could test at uh, new libraries on this hardware and find any issues. Um, and that was really, really impactful on folks. Um, and we also have uh, a section especially for participants so that they know uh, how to uh, how to prepare, what it is, what is expected, what is the format and and how they can belong or, or for, form part of this community. Um, so the goal is this handbook will be a one-stop handbook um, where anyone, regardless of their community or their event, can go and, and learn from other mentor sprints instead of having to reinvent everything or rethink uh, how to move sprints from in-person to online uh, events. Uh, it's open source, so everyone can, can reuse that resources, share, uh, contribute back to it. And, and the goal is ultimately, as I mentioned before, is, is building a, a community. And uh, whether this is an online uh, community forever or we ever get back to in-person sprints and in-person events. Yes. Um, so. Yep. <laughs> so Chuck is going to tell you how we can, how you can get involved with the Mentor Sprints community. Yeah, so you can actually um, share your experience by contributing to the handbook. Like Tanya said, this is open source, so uh, you are f free to use it. And if you have run the Mentor Sprint and then um, run it online with your community, um, run it at your conference, then uh, you can share you know, um, your experience and share the resources with other organizers. Uh, tell us you know, what you have you know, experienced, uh, whether the thing that we have written works for you or is it something that we have missed? Uh, and if there's anything special to your event that you want to add some footnotes to it, feel free to do it. It's on GitHub. Uh, so there's the link there. So, uh, you know, it's, it's open source. So we would love your contribution. Um, yeah, so thank you so much. And um, please uh, get in touch by all those means. Uh, we do have a website. Uh, we were going to organize some more uh, mentors, friends. Uh, you know, we will still be using this online format for a little longer. <laughs> I, I can see that. And also, um, yeah, please, uh, you know, feel free to use um, all these resources that's available to you. Feel free to contribute back to it. Um, yeah, so um, I think that's it from us. Uh, anything you would like to add, Tanya? Uh, no, I think like get in touch if you want to contribute to a project, become part of the community. And I think that is all. Thank you very much for joining our talk and hope you enjoy the rest of the Open Source Summit. Yeah.